My name is Lisa, and I live with my husband Grady and my in-laws, making us a family of four. Recently, I found out I'm pregnant, so in a few months, we'll become a family of five. Despite being enveloped in this happiness, there was a concern that I had. And that concern was... Lisa dear, it has to be a boy, or it doesn't count, you know? We're counting on a strong boy, boom, just like that. Ah, uh, we can't know that yet, can we? In fact, my husband Grady is the third generation owner of a sushi restaurant. For that reason, Grady and my mother-in-law were keen on having a successor. It was annoying how they would pester me about it even though we didn't yet know the gender of the child. However, in front of my father-in-law. Lisa, thank you for preparing meals even though you must be struggling with morning sickness. Really, that's true. We keep saying you shouldn't overdo it. Lisa, thank you for everything. Oh, no. It's me who should be thanking you for your consideration. In front of my father-in-law, Grady and my mother-in-law always put on a good face. I had considered talking to my father-in-law about them a few times. But since he was always so considerate, I didn't want to worry him and decided against it. Then, one day, when I was visiting my friend Mia's house, her brother Noah was also there. Actually, at my in-laws, Grady and my mother-in-law keep saying. What? That's so stressful. Shouldn't it be happy news whether it's a boy or a girl, as long as they're healthy? That's what I think, but they keep talking about needing a successor every day. I wonder if there's a good way to deal with this. Ah, uh, I just had an amazing idea. Dude, don't start yelling all of a sudden. You're gonna scare Lisa and the baby. Sorry, but I think it's a really good idea. How about doing a Sadogary birth? Sadogary birth? Noah, you genius. You know... Going back to your own parents' home to give birth, and staying there for a while after. A friend of mine did that, and said it was really reassuring. Going back home to give birth. I hadn't thought of that at all. Maybe I would feel safer at home. Lisa is the one giving birth, so her husband and in-laws should accommodate her needs, right? No objections here. If you need anything, we're here to help. So maybe think positively about it. Thanks to Mia and Noah, I felt a bit relieved after sharing my worries with them. Some time passed, and it was revealed that the baby in my belly was a girl. This made Grady and my mother-in-law even more troublesome. Living under such stress was the worst, so I decided to go back to my hometown for the birth. That day, when I returned home. Since it might cause some inconvenience until I give birth. I was thinking of doing a Sadogary birth to avoid that. A Sadogary birth, huh? If it makes you feel more at ease, I'm for it. But in the old days, women would give birth at their husband's home after marriage. Well, pregnant women these days have such freedoms, which is nice. Considering the restaurant, I thought this would be best. Going back home, huh? Wouldn't that be a bit awkward too? What? Are you two against the Sato Gary birth? Just like dad, mom, and I are all for it too. Right, mom? Yes, yes, of course so ho ho ho. Thanks to my father-in-law, Grady and my mother-in-law agreed, albeit with some snide remarks. However, I was a bit worried about the scheming look they shared. A few days later, after saying goodbye to my in-laws and Grady, I went back to my hometown and eventually gave birth safely. I was filled with happiness when I heard the strong first cry of my baby. However, despite informing them when the labor started, Grady didn't come to be present for the birth. When I returned to my parents' home after being discharged. The thing we sent should have arrived there by now. Did you check it out? Eh? Oh, this envelope? Finally saw it, huh? Took you long enough. I just got discharged, so give me a break, will you? Just hurry up and look inside. Okay. Eh? Is this a divorce paper? Grady's name is already on it but, what does this mean? Now that we have a successor, it's time to divorce. I'll give you 300 yen as alimony. Huh? Successor? What are you talking about? It means you're no longer needed. I really don't understand what you mean. It means there's another child, obviously. Another child means... Don't tell me, Grady. We needed a male heir. That's why we kept saying we needed a boy. But I can't do anything about that. Let me be clear. I have a son with someone else. That's why I said you're no longer needed. After saying that, Grady unilaterally ended the call. The news of a child with his affair partner. 
Upon hearing those words, I decided to consult with some people and devise a plan. A few weeks after this call, I left my baby at my parents' home and headed alone to my in-law's house. I was getting tired of waiting. You're not pregnant anymore, so stop dawdling and walk faster. Finally showed up, huh? I'm here because I finally prepared everything. I don't know what you're thinking, but it's pointless. Is this some futile effort, I wonder? Brady, mother, stop messing around. Dad. Why are you so angry? I've heard everything from Lisa about what you two have been doing. Eh? What do you mean what we've been doing? We've been kind to Lisa, haven't we? That's right. We've always been considerate towards her. Who do you think you're fooling? You've just been agreeing with me. What are you talking about? You're such a troubled person. You see, that's a lie from Lisa. Lisa always makes up silly lies. Lisa hasn't lied about anything. Ah. And who might you be? What is this? State your name. I apologize for the late introduction. My name is No. You know my friend Mia, right? He's her younger brother and a lawyer. A lawyer? We have all the evidence of Grady's affair. Grady and the mother-in-law were taken aback by Noah's sudden appearance. Everything that Grady and my mother-in-law have said to me. I've recorded it all. Recorded? Such a cunning move. I just thought it was important to have evidence. Having evidence means there's a problem with what you two have been doing. That's why I'm saying Lisa is lying. Even if there were recordings, they must be fake. Hey, boss. What's up? Brought a witness here. Hey, let go of me, will you? Isn't that Paige? Why did you bring Paige here? Told you, she's a witness. I'm pregnant with Grady's child, so you better divorce him fast. Whoa, whoa. Ah, ah, ignore that. It's nothing. Oh dear, Paige, you are quite the character, oh ho ho ho. What the heck, Grady and mother? Let's just keep quiet for a moment, Paige, okay? What? Why are you trying to hide our relationship? Just be quiet, dear. Just so you know, the story about this woman being pregnant is a lie. Eh? A lie? Yay. She didn't even know what a maternal and child health handbook was. Her? She doesn't know what a maternal and child health handbook is? There's no way such a stupid story is true. Even I know what a maternal and child health handbook is. Hey, stop making weird accusations. Then why didn't you know about the maternal and child health handbook? I... I do know. I just haven't received it yet. How many weeks pregnant are you? About 20 weeks, I guess. Then how many months pregnant are you? Eh, almost four months. I think... 20 weeks is the beginning of the sixth month of pregnancy. You should have received the maternal and child health handbook by now. Ah, maybe I did receive it. You said you didn't know about the maternal and child health handbook. Forgot your own words already. Mia brought Paige, claiming she was a witness to Grady's infidelity. Paige claimed to be pregnant but didn't know about the maternal and child health handbook or how to count pregnancy weeks. Seeing her condition, Grady and the mother-in-law reacted. Hey, Paige, are you lying about something? Not at all. If it's Grady's baby, I'm totally pregnant. Then how about we confirm it right now with a pregnancy test? That would settle this quickly. I could buy one in 10 seconds, you know? Paige, can you do the test? Can you not? Ah, uh, fine. The pregnancy is a lie. Are you happy now? A lie? You said you were pregnant with a boy. So... You're saying that was all a lie. Yes, that's right. You promised you'd bear a successor? Ah, that was obviously a lie. Working is too tiring. I thought marrying someone and living off their salary would be easier. Then I met you, the third generation sushi restaurant owner, at just the right time. You know, that's just the lowest. Why? Lying to get married is no big deal. Lying about being pregnant is what's despicable. Marriage isn't a tool for your convenience. Don't mess around. This is no joke. I thought we'd finally be free from the successor issue. Successor issue? Such nonsense has never been a concern, you fools. Then what about the fourth generation? Since I'm the third generation, the fourth should also be a male, right? If the grandchild is a girl and she's healthy, that's all that matters. Having a female sushi restaurant owner for the fourth generation would be cool, wouldn't it? But if we're talking about making sushi then, 
The child that was born was a boy. A very healthy boy. In fact, the child I gave birth to was a boy. Behind the scenes, Grady and my mother-in-law had repeatedly told me to inform them immediately once I knew the gender. However, wanting to keep it a surprise until birth, I had evasively responded to their queries. Upon learning for the first time here that a boy was born, Grady and my mother-in-law reacted. Well done, Lisa. So, it was a boy. Then there's no need for a divorce. Oh Lisa, keeping the most important thing a secret, let's just continue living happily together as before. Wait a minute. You said you were going to marry me. I've already quit my job, you know. Then go find another one inch. We already have a daughter-in-law, so you're not needed. The divorce papers have already been submitted to the office. Eh, you already submitted them. You were the ones who sent it, right? Nicely signed and everything. Why would you submit it so quickly? You said I was no longer needed, so I submitted it. This is the result of your ridiculous desires. I just wanted a successor. Blaming Lisa is utterly misguided. Without a successor, the sushi restaurant would go under. We don't need such a thing. Why not? It's better to end on a good note, sell the shop, and enjoy a carefree retirement. Your father in heaven will scold you. My father said it was okay to end the sushi restaurant with my generation. He said that by the time Grady would take over, the times would have changed significantly. But I took over. Because you failed at job hunting. You know that too. The regular at the shop told us voluntarily. It must be that tobacco shop and green grocer is old man. Always meddling in our affairs. Mia and Noah's investigation was flawless. With a little help from some regulars, various truths came to light. Realizing they were overwhelmingly at a disadvantage, Grady and his mother reacted. Lisa, if you have something to say, you should say it directly. Hiring a lawyer and all. You're going to pay him from Grady's account, aren't you? My fee is a homemade sweet somakasi course from Lisa. Sweets? Turns out that's a thing. Don't mess around. In this situation, we're victims in a sense, right? You're not going to start with the we were lied to about pregnancy thing, are you? Exactly. Me and mom have only been trying our best. And this is the result of your best. Getting angry like this is unbecoming of a man, you know? You should be embarrassed as someone older. Oh, I didn't intend to fly off the handle just because it looked that way. Does it mean you should jump to conclusions? Since you said if I have something to say, I should say it directly, I will. Oh, what might that be? Have you noticed that regulars only come on the days father-in-law makes sushi? Is that so? And new customers never return, do they? I don't remember every customer's face. Then why do you think customers don't come? Because conveyor belt sushi is cheaper and more convenient. That's not it. They don't come on weekdays because they're busy with work. They don't come because it's not good. What? My sushi is the best in the world. Ah, uh, like that ramen place famous for its thick broth, right? I know, I know. You, you're making fun of me. Did it seem like I was praising you? Have you read the reviews on Eat Log for this place? The sushi made by the younger male is exquisitely bad is what it said. It also said the sushi by the second generation owner is the best in the world, dot. That can't be. Grady is the best sushi chef in the world. So you were the root of all evil. Even after hearing the reasons why customers were not increasing, Grady and his mother refused to accept the truth. Then... Enough! Talking to you two is a waste of time. I apologize to everyone involved. What's with the sudden anger? I'm divorcing you. I'm disowning Grady. He will not inherit the shop. If you do that, the shop will go under. He plans to close it with his generation. That just shows how little faith he has in you. Why? I've been useful to the shop. No, you haven't. You've been dragging father-in-law down. Not noticing customers frowning so deeply is just appalling. Even Lisa would say that. Don't call me so familiarly. We're divorced, remember? I'll send over the official documents for alimony and child support. Make sure to contact us once you receive them, okay? If only you had taken your training more seriously. Do late now, though. No, please make sure you get a good amount for alimony and child support. For my precious former daughter-in-law and grandchild. 
father-in-law. Leave it to me. For the sake of your father, I'll make sure of it. Well, that's that. That's that. Noah is really good at what he does. You won't be able to escape. Then let's do this. Lisa, remarry Grady. That's the quickest solution, right? Right? I refuse. Hey, aren't you forgetting about me? This is not the time for that. Lisa, please remarry me. Grady and his mother pleaded for reconciliation, but, naturally, I refused. In such a situation, the two reacted. I apologize for the affair and for saying you were no longer needed. I'm begging here. Forgive me, Lisa. Shameless. Father, please don't talk about divorce. We'll take good care of Lisa from now on. Crying about it now is too late. Consider it just one of those affairs that happen when a wife is pregnant. Please forgive me. You're supposed to reflect on what you did. Eek! Well, that's the situation. Make sure you work hard to pay the alimony and everything else. Wait, please. I beg you, forgive us. I'll be leaving now. We'll never see each other again. Thus, through Noah, I demanded alimony from Grady and Paige. Of course, I also firmly requested child support from Grady. And as for my mother-in-law, she was divorced and disowned by my father-in-law. She lost not only her place to live but also her job working as the proprietress at the sushi restaurant. Paige, having quit her job in anticipation of marriage, was already unemployed before this turn of events. According to Noah, the three of them are now living together, scraping by as they work multiple jobs to pay off the alimony and other dues. Thus, they ended up living solely to pay off their substantial debts. As for me, This little one is adorable. Sho, it's Grandpa here, you know. Father-in-law, is it okay if Sho and I come to visit you from now on? Oh, that's a great idea. Let's enjoy some delicious sushi and have a good time. I agree with that. Of course, you're always welcome. But are you sure? Absolutely. Sho will definitely be happy. <coughs> Look, he's already enjoying himself. Even after the divorce, I maintained a good relationship with my father-in-law. I named my newborn son Sho. Sho laughs a lot, drinks plenty of milk, and sleeps well, making him a bundle of energy. Maybe, someday, if Sho wants to inherit his grandfather's shop, that wouldn't be a bad future either. I want to let him do whatever he wishes. My mind was already filled with thoughts of Sho. Becoming a single mother shortly after giving birth was challenging, but I'm willing to do anything for Sho. I plan to do my utmost to ensure we live a happy life together as mother and son. My name is Lisa, a full-time housewife living with my husband, Benjamin. Benjamin and I met at work, and I left my job to get married. Since then, he's been kind, sociable, favored by his superiors and adept at his job. However, Man, being able to eat such good food today again, whose thanks is that? It's thanks to you, Benjamin, you always say that. As long as you know that, it's good. After all, I'm a young department head. Thanks to me working so splendidly, Lisa, you can live without wanting for anything, huh? Yes, thank you always. Since his promotion, Benjamin's attitude at home has become increasingly arrogant. Every time something comes up, he says, it's thanks to me, so while I express gratitude, I've been brushing it off. Then, one day, I understand that being a young department head is the result of hard work, but... But, you know, you have money, so that's like a luxury problem to have. Even so, honestly, it's uncomfortable at home. Having to praise him every time, it's tiring, or rather, honestly, it's bothersome. You should just go along with it a little. From my point of view, Lisa, I'm envious. She is my friend, Jenna. Like this, we sometimes have tea or meals together, consulting each other. It's a fun time, so we both feel refreshed by the time we head home. That day, after parting with Jenna and returning home. For now, here's a million, I'll give this to you. What? Such a large amount of money, hey, what is this money for? Because I'm excellent, I was scouted by a special association. It's a celebration bonus. A special association? Is it really okay to suddenly give such a large amount of money? It's all good. Don't be jealous just because I'm reaching new heights. It's not like that, but... Finally, I become a man worthy of such status. Right, but be careful. From that time, 
Benjamin began to frequently go out with people from that special association. At first, it was normal, but gradually his spending became more reckless, and I became worried. This can't go on. Just as I was thinking this, I got a call from Jenna at just the right time. I thought it would be a good opportunity to talk to her, but… Sorry for calling suddenly. Actually, I've decided to get married and wanted to tell you. Really? Congratulations. So, the date for the ceremony is already set, and I absolutely want Lisa to come. Of course. I'll definitely attend. I'm so happy for you, Jenna. He's a really wonderful person look forward to the ceremony. I'll be waiting for the invitation. In this way, I received an unexpected and happy report from Jenna. Certainly, with such joyous news, I couldn't bring myself to talk about my own troubles. Eventually, as I settled into those feelings and looked forward to Jenna's invitation, one day, for some reason, Benjamin brought Jenna home with him. Wondering what was happening, I asked them. What did you just say? So, I said I got Jenna pregnant, so we have to divorce. Got Jenna pregnant, what do you mean? Geez, just like I said. I'm pregnant with Benjamin's child. And so, we're getting married, so first off, you have to divorce him. Jenna. But you just called me about getting married. Oh, that invitation? I brought it directly to you. Here. Benjamin and Jenna's names. So, Jenna, your fiancé is Benjamin? Yeah, it's a shotgun wedding, you know? Or what do they call it now, a blessing wedding? I don't care what it's called now. Benjamin, is this true? It's true. That's why we came to talk to you together. Having this conversation directly, don't you think I'm incredibly sincere? Benjamin, as expected. So kind to have a proper talk. Kind where? How could you, my friend, do this? And Jenna, Benjamin is my husband. I know, but, like, I don't have these rules of love in me. Even if the person is married, if I like them, I don't care, I go for it. What are you talking about? Well, that's the situation, so Lisa, you should understand. I've let you live a luxurious life until now, that should be enough, right? I haven't been living a luxurious life. Come on, you should be a little grateful to Benjamin. You're just jealous of my success. Yet you're the type of woman who takes the money. Well, that's the situation, so take care, okay? I was utterly shocked by the sudden turn of events. However, there was a reason why I promptly divorced Benjamin and moved out. All that was left was to wait, and a month later. Hey! I know you're there, Lisa. Lisa, come out. Yes, yes. Ha! Huh? Benjamin and Jenna, what's with those ragged clothes? I hardly recognized you with that look. Don't play dumb. This is all your fault we ended up like this. Exactly. Acting all innocent. Ha! Huh? What are you talking about? I don't understand. You knew that special association Benjamin joined was a fraud group, didn't you? Why didn't you say anything? Look at what happened to us because of you. Yeah. And I got fired from my job for no reason I can understand. You must have done something, right? This is all your own doing. Don't blame everything on me. Indeed, there was a reason I divorced Benjamin so smoothly. It was because he ignored my warnings and got involved with that group. No matter how many times I told him to be careful, he just laughed it off, not suspecting anything. But that wasn't all. You leaked the company's confidential information to that special association, didn't you? That's why you were fired. Understand that clearly. Aren't you Noah, a board member? Why are you here? Who's that? He's the son of KST Corp's president. Currently a board member but said to be the next president. Why is such an incredible guy at Lisa's house? Don't tell me. You two were having an affair to frame Benjamin. Were you even listening to me? No! It must be. This was all a trap you set up. I hadn't mentioned it, but Noah and I are just childhood friends. Unlike some people, I'm not interested in affairs. There's no way I can believe that. Exactly. You must be having an affair. Just because you did, doesn't mean Noah and I did. I won't believe any excuses. The unbelievable part is you leak company information just for money. It's lucky it wasn't more critical information, but don't think you're off the hook so easily. Then there's no problem. I was fired, wasn't I? 
After doing something so outrageous, don't play the victim. I had also requested to investigate various things. It was when that information came out that I found out about Jenna's affair. But well, it was good timing that I could divorce at the same time I contacted Noah. Noah was my childhood friend and the future president of the major corporation KST. Benjamin, who had no idea about this, was shocked to see Noah. Jenna was making a baseless fuss, insisting that Noah and I were having an affair. Moreover, So, it's Lisa's fault for spreading it to the company. Now that you mention it, if Lisa hadn't snitched, it wouldn't have been discovered. It's your fault I lost my job. Sneaking around behind my back, that's the worst. You're saying I should have kept quiet about something so outrageous? You're joking, right? As a wife, you should have thought about your husband first. If there was love for the husband, sure, but the husband should feel the same. But by that time, Benjamin and Jenna were already having an affair, right? It was already over. What Lisa did was right. Even if you two were on good terms knowing Lisa, she would have reported it to the company. Can't believe you don't understand that despite being married. Knowing so much about Lisa is definitely weird. You must have had an affair. I told you, we've been childhood friends. We've been together from kindergarten to university. We went to the same schools all the way, and our houses were really close. Even so, being that close feels odd. And choosing that guy over me for the leak. Lisa must be at fault, right? You seem determined to make it about us having an affair. But no matter how much you search, you won't find any evidence of an affair. If we search thoroughly, something will come up. Nothing will come up because it didn't happen. And this whole Lisa is at fault thing, what's that about? You're the one who did something worth getting fired over. Once the information leak was discovered, it was bound to come back to you. Then we should have kept quiet until it was found out. Telling us before any critical information leaked out was the right thing. We have many employees, and their lives and their families' livelihoods depend on the company. Most importantly, I won't allow anyone to mess with my father's company. Benjamin and Jenna tried to place the blame on me. However, I hadn't done anything wrong. Naturally, Noah understood that as well. Get me back into that company now. This kind of forceful dismissal. I'll sue. Don't be ridiculous. Leaking information is a valid reason for dismissal. But, I think everyone makes a mistake or two, you know. You didn't become unemployed over something that minor. Besides, why doesn't Jenna work to support the household until Benjamin finds a job? You're remarried, right? It's the era of working women, might be good for you. You must be joking. I married Benjamin because he was on the fast track to success. I was supposed to live a leisurely life without working. Then work until that dream comes true. No way. I'm mentally prepared to be a housewife, working is impossible. That's just being selfish, unbelievable. Forget about that, pay me compensation. This is all your fault. I didn't get a single yen of alimony when we divorced. Even after divorce, you can claim alimony within three years. Aren't we knowledgeable? You know, those words are a perfect boomerang, right? Why? The ones committing adultery are you guys, right? But Lisa didn't receive alimony when she divorced. Actually, Lisa is the one who should be receiving alimony. Things were rushed at the time, and we couldn't properly discuss it. Now, it seems like we can talk about the alimony properly. Why should I pay? I'm the victim here. And I'm a victim too because I got dragged into this. If that reasoning holds, then married people can cheat and divorce freely. It's great to be knowledgeable, but it seems you don't know who should be the one claiming alimony. It appeared that Benjamin and Jenna were desperate for money right away. Their ragged clothes made it clear they were struggling financially. However, it was all due to their own actions. Their unreasonable demands pushed even the usually calm Noah to his limit. Enough already. Eek! What? Why are you so mad? We're the ones who should be angry. Shut up. What alimony, you idiots. You're the ones who should be paying. Ha! Huh. Stop joking around. Us, pay? That's impossible. Ah uh ha -huh. In what country do you live where you think you can cheat and still get alimony? Lisa did the right thing. You were fired because you did something wrong. I don't care who that woman thinks she is, but you're the ones who should be paying. Understand that. But given our situation, we're the pitiful ones, so we should be receiving, right? You? Are you confusing alimony with some kind of welfare? Just pay up, anything will do. 
Exactly. Can't you see? We're in trouble. It's your responsibility, so deal with your own problems. You're married now, right? Then build a new life together. That's impossible. Jenna is pregnant. Then find a job quickly and work to support your family. Let me make this clear. I'm not as nice as Lisa. You got that. What do you mean by that? Because you're going to have to pay for the damages related to your actions. What? Why? It's not just a personal issue for me. It's from KST Corporation. You understand, right? From the company, you mean a giant corporation is claiming damages from us. Exactly. And I will also formally claim alimony for our divorce from Benjamin and Jenna. Benjamin and Jenna were faced with claims for damages from Noah's company and a claim for alimony from me. Despite these actions, their belief in being the victims was stronger, and they refused to accept responsibility. However... Well, keep saying whatever nonsense you want. A lawyer will send you the official documents later, so take a good look at reality then. Instead of playing the victim forever, why don't you reflect on your actions for once? As if I have anything to reflect on. Me neither, nothing at all. Benjamin, you leaked company information and cheated. Jenna, you had an affair with the husband of someone who was supposed to be your friend. Can you tell me where in all of this there is a good deed? That is. It wasn't cheating, it was true love. Ah. Uh, there are no rules in love, was it? I don't know what rules those are. Even children wouldn't make such a foolish excuse nowadays. Well, whether you take this seriously or not, the situation won't change. The future situation? Does that mean we really have to pay, is that it? Look at that. You do understand. Are you serious? If it's a joke, we might still forgive you. Your forgiveness is not needed, thanks. Instead of wasting time on this pointless talk, go and find a new job already. Wait a minute. A claim from such a big company. If that happens, we really won't be able to live. Then work to make a living. Hey Lisa, you said he was your childhood friend, right? Can't you talk to him about the damages? No. I was wrong. I apologize. Please, I'm begging you. Please overlook me too. I won't do it ever again. If begging was enough, we wouldn't need lawyers. You're adults. Take responsibility and reflect. And could you please leave now? Benjamin and Jenna were obstinate to the very end, but Noah declared it a waste of time and ushered them out. Benjamin faced a claim for damages from KST Corporation and a claim for alimony from me. Jenna, too, received the claim documents, which seemed to have thrown her into panic. Jenna had claimed to be pregnant just to ensnare Benjamin. Upon learning the truth, Benjamin was furious, but his anger changed nothing. Unable to secure a well-paying job, they attempted to scrape by on part-time work, which was far from sufficient. The couple accumulated debt, their financial obligations ballooning. Benjamin, who was supposed to become an elite company employee, and Jenna, who had planned to live without working, found themselves in a dire situation, the reality far from their dreams. They moved to a cheap apartment, unable to afford even basic furniture, leading a dismal life of nothing but work to pay off their debts. As for me. I've got a gift for you today. What? You didn't have to do that. When I said I was visiting Lisa, mom insisted I bring it. Your mom did? Your favorite strawberry cake. She was so happy saying that. She remembered my favorite cake. That makes me so happy. I remembered too. You like chocolate cake, right? Ah, uh, you remembered. Of course. How long do you think we've been together? Since then, I began to see Noah more frequently. Even when I went back to my parents' house, we would bump into each other due to our close proximity. However, these encounters brought back nostalgic feelings, and I looked forward to spending time together. Noah occasionally brought over sweets, claiming they were gifts from his mom. But it was clear some were personally chosen by him. I always pretended not to notice, accepting them with a smile. The significance of these gifts seemed something I would understand a bit later. Having returned to single life, I was fortunate to find a remote job. Now, every day feels enjoyable, and being alone isn't so bad. I'm living a comfortable life, ready for a fresh start, determined to make the most of each day. My name is Lisa, and I live with my parents and my older sister, Briar, in a family of four. 
Briar has been a somewhat famous child actor since she was young. My parents tried to make me a successful child actor too, hoping to earn money from my fees. However, I wasn't very successful as a child actor. When I reached middle school. Hey, look at this, I got featured so prominently again this month. Oh, really? Lisa, you should work on your appearance more, since you've been a child actor too. Do you even realize you're my sister? Your fashion sense is the worst. I think I'm just normal. Your normal is considered lame by everyone else. I'm working on my homework right now, can you please not bother me? By this time, Briar had started to gain popularity as a reader model. As Briar steadily climbed the ladder of stardom, our parents became even more fond of her. Eventually, when I was in my third year of high school. What, you're planning to go to college? You can't afford that, can you? Huh? But I've already been accepted. You're so carefree, Lisa. I mean, I have my own earnings, but you're just living off our parents, leeching off them. I plan to take a scholarship loan and increase my part-time work hours. But that's after you enroll, right? You don't have the entrance fees yet. Oh my, Briar is such a thoughtful child for worrying about that. A true role model as a sister. Lisa, you have such a good example right beside you. You need to take a leaf out of her book and put in more effort. It's definitely better to be independent early on, right? Otherwise, living off others just leads to a lazy lifestyle, you know? Briar is not just kind, she's also very responsible. She's our pride and joy. You're right. Okay, I understand. After that, I went to my aunt and uncle's house. My aunt is my mother's sister, and they are kind people who have always been very affectionate towards me since I was young. Despite my sudden visit, they welcomed me with their usual smiles. When I told them about my situation at home, they offered for me to stay with them and commute from there. After I started living at my aunt and uncle's house. When we were kids, people always said college students have no money. And it's true. Maybe it feels that way more because I have to handle everything myself living alone. In high school, I never thought about utility bills or rent. Well, let's do our best. We got into college, after all. Yeah, you're right. Let's give it our all. He is Noah, whom I met at university. We got along best, shared high aspirations, and grew together, stimulating each other. A few years later, I had business at a TV station and went there. Inside, I saw my parents and Briar at the same site. Um, good morning. Good morning, Aying. Are you the new person today? Nice to meet you. This is Briar, a successful model. You seem unknown, though. You know about Briar, of course, don't you? Ah, uh, yes. If you take our daughter as your role model, you'll surely become popular, too. They haven't recognized me at all. Well, that's just fine. What's up? Oh, nothing. Looking forward to working together on the shoot. We had a brief conversation, but none of them recognized me. If that's the case, it would be less troublesome. I hoped the recording would go smoothly without any issues. While checking the progress, I encountered someone. Isn't that Lisa? Long time no see. Are you here for the recording today? Producer. Good morning, thank you for everything last time. I've been wanting to have you on the show again. What a coincidence. But if I ask you directly, it might be considered poaching, huh? No problem at all. I'll report it properly later. Wait, producer. Don't bother with such an amateur. Using me would definitely get better ratings. Yes, you can directly deal with us, no problem. You don't need to go through an agency. Just talk to Briar directly, it's totally fine. Oh, Briar is here too. Are you here for today's recording? Yes, glamour is important for a show, right? They contacted me saying they had an open slot. Ah, uh, so it's a replacement for someone who couldn't make it, something like that. Not exactly. It's more like our Briar was luckily chosen for this opportunity. Witnessing this exchange, I realized that some things never change, even after many years. The producer seemed clearly perplexed. Thinking that I couldn't let them trouble him any further, I decided to reveal my identity. You seem quite desperate to get work. You're Briar, the former reader model from KST Academy who couldn't get rid of her bedwetting habit until she was 15, right? What? How do you know that? Who are you? We haven't made that story public. Wait a minute. That face. 
Could it be? Long time no see. I'm Lisa, currently an actress with KST Agency. Well, I suppose we were, sort of a family once upon a time. Did you just say KST Agency? You're with that major agency. Yes, thanks to them. I was scouted by one of their agents at an audition where I made it to the final round but didn't win. Scouted by an agency I couldn't even get into no matter how much I begged. How cheeky. Besides, someone like you being here is just presumptuous. Lisa, if you're earning that much, you should be sending money back home. Exactly. Briar has been working hard and thriving in the industry since her child actor days. Thriving at the forefront. I don't know anyone named Briar. Hello, Noah. Are you here for a shoot today, too? Hey, producer. Good to see you. Wait, could it be? These are the faux family Lisa mentioned before. What despicable people. Oh, no way. It's the famous actor Noah. Nice to meet you. It's an honor to meet you. I'm the mother of the super popular Briar. I'm the father. I'm Briar, a popular multi-talented celebrity, originally a reader model. Yeah, but I still have no idea who you are. Briar and our parents began to flatter Noah conspicuously after greeting him. However... Oh my, you look even more wonderful in person. Indeed, you have a completely different aura from others. Um, maybe after work, would you like to go to a bar and have a drink, just the two of us? Could you please refrain from making such inappropriate invitations to my husband? Eh? I said, don't make strange overtures to my husband, Noah. Husband! Noah is your husband, Lisa. I've known about your true colors for a long time. You claim to be a successful celebrity, but you barely have any work now, right? That's not true at all. Oh, Noah, you're so funny. Haha. <laughs> in fact, Noah, whom I met in college, became a famous actor. I also joined a major agency and have been thriving as an actress. We achieved our dreams and got married a while ago. On the other hand, Briar now hardly has any significant work and her earnings have decreased substantially. I don't know if you can't let go of your past glory or what, but that kind of flirtatious and fawning behavior is quite unseemly. Shut up. I have more experience than you. I can get work anytime I want. That's easy to say. Today's job is something you took because you had nothing else. Earlier, you were even pestering the producer in a pushy way. There's no such thing as first class or third class. It's about professional conduct, you know? Promoting oneself is a natural part of the job, isn't it? Getting known by various people is also part of business. What business? You're delusional and persistent. Realize that everyone is annoyed by you. After 20, you're just another person. When I walk down the street, everyone turns to look at me. Even now, when I show up at the TV station, everyone notices me. Of course they look at you when you make such a racket. What? They probably turn to look because your fashion sense is atrocious. Don't be rude. I was a child actor and a reader model, you know. But all that is in the past. What do you have now? Briar, her face flushed red at Noah's words, seemed to be grappling with the harsh reality of his statements. It appeared that my parents had overly praised Briar and she, in turn, had become overly confident. Suddenly, amidst this conversation, my parents began. Lisa, dear, this reunion here must be some kind of fate, don't you think? Fate? Don't you feel it's a fateful reunion? Not at all. In fact, you didn't even recognize me when I greeted you. I wished you hadn't. Oh, Lisa, don't be so cold, please. Lisa is as precious to us as Briar, our lovely daughter. If you have something to say to Lisa, be direct, not roundabout. After you've only cared about the girl all this time, what are you trying to say now? Please, Lisa, to be honest, Briar hardly gets any work these days. There's hardly any income, and the costs for outfits, makeup, and business expenses. They just vanish in a blink. So, what are you trying to say? We need your support every month. Our finances are in dire straits. Briar keeps up appearances, splurging on brands and all. You might have made some effort, but Lisa has worked several times harder. Don't mock me. I've been popular since my child actor days. That's exactly the delusion I'm talking about. The same goes for you too. Asking for support just because you found out Lisa's famous is ridiculous. I don't want charity from Lisa. Don't be so selfish. We don't have any money left. We're completely broke. Finally, my parents expressed their true feelings. Once popular, Briar had now become completely unknown, 
with hardly anyone from the younger generation recognizing her name. Faced with a reality she most dreaded, Briar reacted. Don't joke with me. It's your lack of effort in promoting me, isn't it? You all lived luxuriously off my earnings, didn't you? Wait, Briar. What's gone into you all of a sudden? There's nothing sudden about it. If I say I'm popular, then I am. It's your job to support me to make that happen. Briar, don't talk to us like that. You act like you're the only one suffering. Compared to Lisa, who endured being belittled for all sorts of reasons, you've had it easy. Shut up. I don't care if you're a famous actor or whatever. You have no taste for marrying Lisa. Don't talk nonsense. Lisa is the best wife in the world. She's never made a fool of herself like you have. Don't raise your voice in front of all these staff members. It's embarrassing. Where's the patience you've supposedly developed in the entertainment industry? Shut up. And Lisa. I just remembered, weren't you chosen for the lead in the remake of The Visitor from the Sky? Don't get cocky over something like that. I'm not getting cocky. I'm here for the promotional shoot for that drama. Sorry to interrupt, but Lisa was personally invited by the show. Lisa is in high demand across various programs, unlike you. That's what annoys me. No matter how angry you get, Lisa is a popular actress. You're just a self-proclaimed entertainer. What did you say? Say that again. Self-proclaimed entertainer. Don't you dare repeat that. Arg. Briar, in a fit of frustration, began to lash out at her parents, Noah, and me. Ah, enough. Everyone here is so useless. Calm down. Your parents are bad, but you're even worse. It's because you forget to be grateful to others that no one wants anything to do with you. Well said, Noah. You're absolutely right. You have no right to lecture me. It's your inability to accept others' opinions that's the problem. I have nothing to learn from you. Actually, I think you have a lot to learn. Hey, producer, please be quiet right now. I'm having an important conversation here. I heard Briar was difficult, but she really has a bad attitude. Exactly like the rumors. Maybe we should limit how much we film her today. Oh dear. Once the staff starts disliking you, it's all downhill. In an industry where trust is everything, look what you've done. I haven't said anything wrong. You're the ones complaining. If you think our advice is just complaints, then there's no point in talking to you. Ugh. Say whatever you want. I have more experience than you. Experience alone. Just being there doesn't mean you contribute anything. You're just a salary thief. TV budgets can't afford to waste money on you. You should be grateful to have me appear on your show. Briar, I'm sorry, but we can't handle this anymore. What do you mean by that? Frankly, Briar, you have a bad reputation. I thought of our long relationship, but we won't be using you again with that kind of attitude. The producer finally lost patience with Briar's selfish remarks. We won't be using you again. No entertainer who was told this by this producer has ever made a comeback. Realizing the gravity of the situation, Briar and her parents reacted. Wait, please wait a minute. I can't wait. Please give Briar another chance. His words are final. Hey, Lisa, don't just stand there. Convince him. Once you've angered the producer, there's no going back. Then Lisa, you support us. We can't survive without help. It's a perfect opportunity for you to show gratitude to your parents. Lisa, you're earning, so you should help your family. Is that how you ask for help? Please, I beg you. Support us. I refuse. Why not? Because Lisa has no obligation to support you. If you claim to be a successful celebrity, then work hard and earn your own way. We're about to start filming. I've been called for the shoot. Briar, you should get ready too. This might be your last job. Briar finally realized that her time in the spotlight had ended years ago. However, her futile pride and her parents' commotion led to all three being escorted out by security. The incident was leaked by insiders and humorously reported in Weekly Bun Chu. Briar's poor reputation was already a topic of discussion on internet forums, with entire threads dedicated to her. This marked the end of any hopes for a comeback, and she completely retired from the entertainment industry. Briar and her parents, who had been overly dependent on her earnings and spent extravagantly, lost their sense of money management. Unable to adapt to a normal life, they accumulated debts and were chased for repayments, eventually leading them to a life under a bridge, a stark contrast to their former days of fame and fortune.
As for me. The co-star is Soda Fukuda, right? Yes. He has such a small face and a great style, and he's a really nice person. Oh, but I'm more handsome, right? Are you getting jealous, Noah? No, I'm not. That kind of makes me happy. Well, of course. You're my beloved wife, after all. My drama shooting was going smoothly. Hearing about my co-star, Noah, blushed and showed a hint of jealousy. Despite being a popular actor, Noah remained his usual self with me, which I found incredibly endearing. We both had busy schedules, leading to some mismatches in our lives, but we knew that as long as our hearts were connected, we could overcome any temporary separations. We promised to fully commit to our dreams and keep supporting each other. Thus, we continued to live our lives with gratitude and smiles, day by day. If you enjoyed this video, we'd be thrilled if you subscribed to our channel. Subscribing means you'll receive notifications for new videos, keeping you in the loop with all our latest content. Your support is vital to our growth. Let's enjoy and grow together.